the heart of rural North Yorkshire, in a tranquil spot by the River Rye, stands Nunnington Hall. Dating from the 16th and 17th centuries, but substantially modernised in the 1920s, this impressive property has been home to many interesting individuals and families. The hall was donated to the National Trust in 1952 by Margaret Fife although her family continued to live here until 1978. Over the next 30 minutes, you will enjoy a tour of Nunnington Hall, experience its rich history, and meet some of the characters that lived here during significant times in their lives. One such person is Richard Clive, grandson of Mrs Fife, who was born at the Hall and lived here for 29 years. There was a period of time when the family lived in Derbyshire. Um, that's when my, mother, my grandmother was still alive, and she died in 1952. Um, that's when we moved up here permanently to Lannington. Three brothers and a sister, and a cousin who was adopted. So that's a great big mass of us, six of us all together, including Michael, my cousin. It was a fun childhood and a decent sized house to uh, live in and play in. The first room on the tour, the Stone Hall, is believed to stand in the space occupied by the Great Hall of the 16th century house where Nunnington Hall now stands. In the later 17th century, it seems likely that Lord Preston, one of the hall's many owners, made this his main kitchen. The stone hall is full of the animal heads shot by my grandfather. I know it's politically incorrect now to go around shooting wild animals, but in those days you had a surplus and they were being culled. In a way, I think one felt you were helping the, the ecosystem. This room assumed its present form as part of Lord Preston's remodelling of Nunnington in the 1680s. The fireplace, panelling and sash windows all date from this period. At that time, it was likely to have been the principal bedroom of the house. Earlier this century, it served as a smoking room when it was the domain of Colonel Fife. The deep blue-green paintwork survives from this period. Preston added this small room in the 1680s as a private withdrawing room for the entertainment of specially favoured visitors.
This painting features the arms of Lord Preston and his wife Lady Anne Howard. It was unusual for the woman's crest to be given as equal prominence as her husband's. This was probably due to her financial status. Archaeologists recently discovered the remains of a French pamphlet above this ceiling. It is possible that they were political in content and that they were hidden to conceal French sympathising. Once again, this room, the Oak Hall, took on its present form during Viscount Preston's remodelling of the house in the late 17th century. The panelling, a mixture of oak and pine, was originally painted but was stripped in the 1920s like many such rooms during this period. The careful fitting of the panelling around the carved stone cartouche bearing Lord Preston's coat of arms is possibly the work of York master carpenter John Etty. My father, he has some friends in for dinner and it is dark um, and all of a sudden he said, have you seen my mower? And they went, they looked at him, a bit, <laughs> a bit startled, your mower? He said, yes, my mower, I've got a, I've got a ride on mower. And they said, a ride on mower? He said, oh yes, you've got to see it. So, they, everyone trooped out of the Oak Hall um, and my father went round and got his mower out. And the lights from the Oak Hall lit up the grass outside and there's my father. Um, he's a fine figure of a man. He's six, six three and big, sitting on this little mare thing. Anyway, he was tearing around the thing. And it started raining, and so it has. He didn't want to get his mower wet, so instead of driving the thing back around the house again, he drove it in through the egg hall door. Um, so, <coughs> very sensible, really. Kept, the, kept his mower dry, kept him dry. The only thing was, it was, so, it was new to him and he'd forgotten to turn the blades off. So it's still mowing when, when he went into the house. And he went over <laughs> one of my mother's favourite Persian carpets, Persian rugs. It sucked it up. <laughs> the air was full of, bits, full of wet grass and Persian rug. Lord Preston suffered for his faithful service to King James. After the glorious revolution of 1688, he plotted to restore the king and attempted to escape to France. For this, he was held for a time in the Tower of London under sentence of death. Queen Mary eventually pardoned him after a plea for his life from his daughter, Catherine. to go in most rooms, but the drawing room was one room we were, we used to, we used to go in there. We knew we had to behave there. 